Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing all of the products that failed me this year, 2023, and sharing with you products I would recommend instead. So I hope you all enjoy this style of products that failed me uh, video. I do these every year. It's an annual event. And I definitely try to stick to products that I used this year, 2023. 23. If you are new here, my name is Nadia and I'm a licensed esthetician who loves to test and review skincare products. If you love skincare product reviews, consider subscribing to the channel. So let's start with a facial cleanser. This is the IS Clinical Cleansing Complex. This is almost empty. And I'm going to say this is a fail because this does have some exfoliating properties to it, but I don't feel like it exfoliates enough. I do want to mention that I love the lather and the gel very lightweight feel of this. This is definitely something I prefer during spring and especially summer. I still use this every now and then during fall and winter, but it's definitely something that I prefer during spring and summer. I feel like it efficiently cleanses the skin, but again, I wish that it had more of a chemical exfoliation, and I think that it doesn't have a high enough chemical exfoliation because it is also suited and recommended for sensitive skin types. What I would or what I have enjoyed a little bit more than that for different reasons is the Gian Marini Bioglycolic Face Cleanser. This is brand new. I have yet to dip into it. I am going to do so once I empty this, but I have already used a full size unit of this. There are different ways that you use both of these products. This is meant to be used on dry skin, whereas this is supposed to be used on damp skin. This is, I would say, a creamy cleanser. It does not lather and you are supposed to remove it with a washcloth. The major differences here is that I always experience a tingle with this particular product, whereas with this, zero. I do not experience a tingle at all. I personally love and I feel like my skin thrives with a lathery, sudsy, cleanser and this is not it which is why it's not like one of my top cleansers but I wish I wish that this gave me that tingle and more of that chemical exfoliation because this is quite pricey as well so in essence to me it's it's literally just a very basic gel cleanser that lathers really nicely and this gives me the glow after the removal that chemical feel but it does not give me the lather. Next I have the Bio Effect EGF Eye Serum. This is a major major fail for me. I love this formula. This formula has an anti-aging effect on my eyes. One of the first eye serums with an applicator such as this. I reviewed this here on my channel. I will link the review up above. It has a roller ball. The formula I would say is innovative in the sense that it has the barley in there and it is made in Iceland and I personally, I feel like it did have anti-aging effects. Um, and I think I gave it a pretty high rating as well. Um, it does retail around $90, $95. Um, and I, th I feel like it, it could also be um, refillable. My gripe with this is that it literally lasted me about a month to a month and a half for 0.6 ounces for $95. I could not believe my eyes when I could no longer pump product from this unit. And I felt kind of duped. Like, I feel like maybe I got a dud, but this emptied so fast and I was so disappointed because I thought I literally had maybe another month since I was using it morning and evening. So this was a major fail for 
me. What I would, I guess, recommend instead that doesn't necessarily have uh, those anti-aging benefits, but it does have depuffing benefits, at least for me, is the Murad Targeted Eye Depuffer. And I also reviewed this here on my channel. I will link the review up above for you all. This has also that kind of, my unit is very filthy. It does have that applicator that you apply to the eye and I feel like what makes this product work the most is just the application and how you massage the product into the skin. It does have the same cooling and soothing effects as this but I feel like it actually depuffs. I applied this to my under eye this morning when I went on my regular Friday dog walk and one I had therapy last night and I cried all the, like throughout the entirety of the session two I watched the crown and I cried through a few of the episodes there and then three I went to sleep very very late so my eyes woke up incredibly puffy but I put this on and I think the puffiness has gone down especially here along the under eye so this may not have the same anti-aging effects as this has, but it has lasted me well over two months now using it morning and evening, and it's not 90 or $95. So if you're dealing with puffiness, consider this, check out the review, and then see how I use it to really get that depuffing effect. Now, this is a brand that's new to me, May Love. They sent over a very generous care package that I hope to try more of in 2024. I tried to, to give this an honest go. Directions for use here are apply one full dropper to the face and gently massage into the skin until absorbed. Try to do that. Super Smooth is a hybrid AHA BHA serum that resurfaces dull skin and decongests pores to help improve your skin tone, lines, and texture. To be honest, I don't know how much of an AHA BHA percentage is in this formula, but to be honest, it feels like it's very minimal. I gave this an honest go a couple nights, a couple nights, and then I would use it in the morning after before using. A vitamin C serum and it just didn't do anything to my skin it almost felt like I was using like a good molecules product so I wouldn't recommend this and I wanted to review this for you all but it, it just really didn't do much to my skin something that would in fact resurface the skin is the drunk elephant TLC from booze glycolic night serum this I use it every now and then in my nighttime routine. I always experience a tingle when I use it and what I love the most is the results the next day. Smoother, softer, more luminous skin. That which I did not get from this product. Another product that I wanted to review for you all was the Ula Enriksen Barrier Booster Orange Ferment Essence. Looks like this. I obviously emptied it, um, but not because it was brightening. It was just kind of hydrating. And there are two things that I would recommend as well. I had issues with two toners this year or essences, and this was one of them. I feel like this really just didn't do much for my skin. It didn't necessarily brighten and it didn't hydrate my skin enough for me to even speak to those results. What did actually kind of hydrate and brighten and give me the most amazing glow this year was the Pharmacy Brighten Up 3% TXA Dark Spot Toner with Azelaic Acid and PHAs. I will link my review to that up above. I'm not going to open this fresh unit here, but the Pharmacy TXA Toner gave my skin the most amazing glow it had this year. I feel like it really just kind of helped to promote an even tone in my skin. It didn't dry me out at all and it certainly did more than this Ula Enriksen essence. The other 
toner that I particularly had an issue with was the PCA Skin Hydrating Toner. It says here, antioxidant essence for hydrated skin. And I do like the pumping effect, but I don't think I like that in a toner for my own use. I like the idea of it, but I feel like this just wasn't as hydrating as I wanted it to. And I really wanted to love it. I know I got a sample of it from PCA Training in a spray form and I enjoyed the spray form so much more than the actual full size unit of this. And what I actually got more hydration from was the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow PHA and BHA Pore Tight toner. This hydrated my skin so much more than this and so much more than this as well. This I would say is more of a hydrating toner. Um, it does address pores as well without a tingle. This addresses hyperpigmentation and dull skin. If you need hydration, this is it. If you need brightening, you have dull skin and you love a glow, this will get you there. I feel like I my skin is more hydrated when I use this. It's more balanced when I use this. And this is almost empty and I will um, use another unit of this because I have that just kind of waiting for me. I reviewed, I think I reviewed both of these and I was so underwhelmed. I think I gave this maybe like a 7 or a 7.5. And these were the Kate Somerville High Hydrocate Recharging Water Cream and Recharging Serums. These were just kind of very basic, very high price point, very basic results. Um, they didn't hydrate my skin as much as I would have personally liked. If I were to recommend an alternative for the Kate Somerville Recharging Serum, I would do the Medicaid Hydrate B5 and 10 Serum. And for the moisturizer, I did like that I could use this during the day. That I enjoyed. And the packaging as well, you know, airless pump keeps things sanitary, ingredients nice and stable, but it just didn't really do enough for me. What I would recommend instead um, is the Glow Recipe Plum Plump Hyaluronic Cream. I also reviewed this here on my channel. This gives my skin an amazing glow. It also hydrates my skin and what I love about this versatility that it offers my normal skin. I can get away with using this in the morning and at night. I feel like for the vast majority of this year I either loved a moisturizer strictly for the day or strictly for the night and this gave my skin some versatility in that aspect. I did use both of these today. So I used the Benefit Professional Super Setter on this side of my face and then I used the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray on this side of my face. Let me know if you can see the difference. And the reason why this failed me is the smell. Scents are not typically a deal breaker for me, but every time I use this, it just does not make me feel good. The scent in this is a major deal breaker for me, and the spray as well. And again, this is um, a sample size unit that I got in a Sephora favorites kit bag during the fall Sephora sales event. And don't get me wrong, I love the overall finish of this skin. There's a nice glow, the powders have melted onto the skin very, very nicely. And my, I, I would say my favorite setting spray for the year, which did so last year as well, maybe, maybe it did not. Um, it's the Professional Super Setter. Um, this has more of a matte, matte-like, more natural finish to the skin. The powders have melted onto the skin. There is more of a pore diffusion happening here on this side because of that more matte, natural finish. And the best part is that I love the mist. The mist here is super soft. And the best part is that there is no bad smell.
ugh, it's the smell that really just does it for me. I do not want to start my day by misting this awful smelling setting spray. <laughs> like, I, I honestly, I do not mind bad scents. Like, I don't mind the bad scent on a current Paula's Choice serum that I reviewed here on my channel, but it is just that spray effect that kind of makes the scent linger wherever you are. Um, but I just don't want to start my day off like that. And I don't mind it in the serum, but this is just not it, sadly. I don't have a, an alternative for you for this specific product, but my, I guess, fragrance fail of the year would be the Fleur Solar Power. I luckily ordered just a travel size of this and I really tried to love this, especially I think it came out spring or summer, I'm not sure. And even now when I smell it, it's just not. I don't think I am a, a solar kind of gal, if you will. It's just not it. I have tried a number of fragrances this year and uh, this is the only one that did not garner any compliments at all. So this is going to be my fragrance fail of 2023. Let me know if you have used this in the comments down below. Um, do you love this? And if you don't love it, what alternatives would you offer with similar notes? I just remember seeing the notes and thinking, ooh, that sounds like something I would love, which is why I, I picked it up, but I just did not end up loving it at all. Blushes. And it is the Rose Ink Lip and Cheek Color in Delphine. This also came in a Sephora kind of favorites bag that I think I tried at the but end of last year or during spring this year. Um, this formula just didn't really do much for me. I did try it in the back of my hand before I started filming and it's practically gone. Um, I don't like the formula of this at all. It's definitely very balmy and it just really just disappears so, so fast. And then in the same Sephora favorites kit where I got the um, Air Brush Flawless Setting Spray by, by Charlotte Tilbury. I also got a full size of the Milk Makeup Blush in Work. This is also lip and cheek. Let me give you a swatch of, of this by Rose Ink. So let me do Rose Ink here. And it's like it's, it's a barely there color. And then let me do Milk Makeup. I tried this on for the video try on and on my cheeks it just rubbed off. And you can see even, even here on, on the back of my hand, it just rubbed off upon application. So it just did not work well on my skin. Just added a little bit more. Instead, what I would recommend is Dibs. This is by Courtney Shield. It's Desert Island Beauty Status. And I love these Desert Island duos. I already followed Courtney Shields, but I never purchased it until I got a PR package by Ula and Rickson, and they sent shade 5.5, which is, I guess, one of the shades that I love the most. So on one side, you get a bronzer or contour, and then on the other side, you get a blush. Now these blushes, I have four of these sticks now. The blushes perform so well. The formula is buttery and Look at that pigment. I literally just did two swipes. I didn't have to go over the area so many times. And that color payoff compared to this Rose Ink Balm, even compare it to Milk Makeup who has been in the market for years and years, Dibs just does so much better. 5.5 is mauve, like a mauve finish blush. I'm not wearing that blush today, but I am wearing the bronzer all over my face. If you have seen any of my videos, I think during like fall and winter, 
blush and bronzer is typically always by dibs and it's, i think it's one of the things that i have loved the most in 2023 but instead of picking these up i would highly encourage you to check out the dibs beauty desert island duo sticks um shade 5.5 is my favorite i think two as well and shade four as well i think that is all i have my 2023 skincare fragrance and makeup fails of the year. Let me know what failed you in 2023. If these are any of your favorite products, please do not take it personally. Like some of these are very, are reasons that are just very personal to me as to why they just did not work out for me. Let me know if we share any 2023 product fails in the comments down below. And if there are any product recommendations that you may have as well, feel free to list those down below for me. So that's all I've got for you all today. Thank you so much for spending some time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.